Welcome guys to the first flip classroom movie of the year. We're going to talk about the scientific method today. So some things to keep in mind is that you guys are taking notes at your own pace. So the good news is, is that if you miss something or if we're going too fast, all you have to do is pause the video. And go back. Um, make sure that you follow along in your notes so you know what you're supposed to be writing down. And whenever you get to a stop and jot, you need to pause the video, answer the questions, and have your teacher check your answers before moving on. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So what is the scientific method? Well, the scientific method is a clever way of addressing a problem that we see in the world. And the interesting thing about the scientific method is that it's not only used by scientists, it's used by everyone. Right, anytime you need to solve a problem. And so in order to do the scientific method correctly, there are five steps that you need to pay attention to. It's a five-step process. So let's go ahead and talk about them. So the first step is you need to state the problem, which makes sense. If you're going to solve a problem, you need to know what it is that you're trying to solve. And instead of saying solve the problem or state, or I'm sorry, state the problem, sometimes we just use the word observation. And in our previous class, we discussed that there were two general types. Um, Ms. Hines, what were those two types? Um, one type was quantitative observations. Those were observations that involved numbers. Mm -hmm. And the other type was qualitative. And that has to do with the quality of something. So you're describing something mm -hmm. without using any numbers. So something's brown, something's hard, something's soft. All right, let's move on to step number two. So step number two is form a hypothesis. What does that mean? So a hypothesis is basically an educated guess. And I know many of you guys are comfortable with it because you probably heard that term all throughout your um, middle school science careers and probably a little bit even in the elementary school. Um, the third step is a prediction, and I will tell you that in most cases, people confuse a prediction and a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And for our class, we're never going to ask you to differentiate between the two. We just want you to know that sometimes the word prediction is thrown into the scientific method and its five steps. Okay, and then the next step is to perform a controlled experiment. And I would put a big star next to that because that's probably the most important part of the scientific method and it's also the part that's the trickiest so we're yeah. going to spend some more time talking about controlled experiments a little later on in today's movie. And the last step is to draw a conclusion. Conclusion comes at the end. It's to conclude. Um, sometimes you'll hear people talk about scientific theories, which are a conclusion based on lots of experiments. Yeah, so if we're only doing one experiment and nobody else is doing that experiment, we're going to call it a conclusion. Yeah. But if every single person in this room and every single person um, at CHS was doing the same exact experiment and they all got the same data, we could eventually refer to that as a theory because lots of different um, pieces of evidence are supporting that particular topic. Okay, so let's take an example problem and work through it using the scientific method. So I've made this observation. Um, unfortunately, Miss Cook can't get a date for this Friday night. Yeah, and I'm cheap and I want somebody to buy me a hamburger. Yeah, and I think this picture might explain why. I just, I don't know why I can't get a date because clearly funny. I'm a winner. Uh, so let's use the scientific method to help her out. All right, so things to remember. Okay, first, you can't solve a problem until you know exactly what it is. So that's why we got to state the problem. Okay. And just a reminder, still can't figure There's out the problem. <laughs> why I can't get a date. Thanks a lot, Ms. Hines. <laughs> All right. All right. Step two is you need to form a hypothesis, which, remember, is an educated guess. But it's even more than that. How else can we define hypothesis? So a hypothesis has to be based on observation. So you can't mm -hmm. make a hypothesis until you've seen stuff. So basically, it's just an explanation for what you've seen. But the key is that explanation has to be testable. We have to be able to do an experiment. Uh, okay. We have to be able to do an experiment. Yeah. And so the hypothesis for our particular experiment, because we're trying to figure out why I can't get a date, which is beyond me. Mm -hmm. um, so. Miss Hines came up with this hypothesis. So my hypothesis is that Miss Cook's body odor is preventing her <laughs> from getting a date Friday night. Okay, so question, is that a testable explanation based on an observation? Yeah, I think that we can make an experiment to test out if this is what's going on. All right, so let's go ahead and see if that's really my problem. So now step three is we're going to make a prediction, which is what we expect to happen if the hypothesis is correct. Okay. So I think that if Miss Cook wears perfume, then she will get a date. Okay. And I noticed that you have an if-then statement there. Yeah. 
So is that an important way to set up the statement? Yep, that's how we always try to set up our predictions. Okay, so um, again, can't get a date for Friday night. Ms. Hines' hypothesis was that it's because of my body odor questionable. And uh, she thinks that if I just wear some more perfume, I'll be able to get a date. So now what do we need to do? Now we need to perform a controlled experiment. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So here's where we get into some detail because there's a lot of things that go into a controlled experiment. There's actually five important parts that we have to talk about. So let's start off with the first step, which is something called the independent variable or the IV. So you're going to be hearing this term IV or independent variable one million times this mm -hmm. year. It needs to become your best friend. The IV is something that the SOL is always going to ask you to identify in a controlled experiment if it's a proper controlled experiment. So the easiest thing to remember when you're trying to figure out what an independent variable is, it's the thing that I change. I change. I an independent and I the scientist change it. So another thing that you might also hear is that it's the thing that's being manipulated mm -hmm. and manipulate means the same thing as change. So sometimes the SOL will use that fancy word instead of Probably the word change. Probably write that on your papers too. Yeah. So let's think about this. In my experiment, we're mm -hmm. experimenting on me. I want a date for Friday night because I want some free hamburgers. What would we be changing in the experiment to try to get me a date? Um, well, what we're changing is we're changing your odor. Okay. Um, we're we're going to put some perfume on you. So I'm going to write here odor or perfume. Okay. And remember, if you're doing the experiment, that's the thing that you were changing, and we're doing the experiment, so it's the thing that I'm going to change to try to see whether or not that's what's causing the problem. Okay, part number two is something called the dependent variable. Again, you're going to hear about it almost every day this year. Also called the DV. So want to tell us about what that is? So the dependent variable depends on the IV. Right. So, so it's there. going to change based on whatever you're doing with the IV or the independent variable. But another way of saying it, to make it easier to remember, we can just say it's the thing that we're measuring. So the dependent variable is what you are measuring. It's the outcome that you're looking for. So what you collect yeah. data on. So if we were thinking about our experiment, mm -hmm. what are we measuring or what are we collecting data on? Well, what we're going to measure, what we're going to see is whether or not you can get a date. So the number of dates that I get. Okay. So now we're going to go through and we're going to talk about the independent variable and the dependent variable using different terms to make it easier to understand. This is one of the hardest topics to learn in biology, but once you get it, the good news is, is that it'll make everything else a piece of cake. So if the independent variable is the cause, the dependent variable would then be the effect. Very nice. And if the independent variable is the before, then it would make sense that the dependent variable can be thought of as the after. And if the independent variable is the input, the dependent variable is the output. And if the independent variable can also be referred to as what you do, the dependent variable is what happens. So if you ever get confused, think about this chart. Independent mm -hmm. variable, cause, dependent variable, the effect. We said the independent variable is what I change. Mm -hmm. The dependent variable is what we are Measuring. measuring. Okay? So all of those things will help you remember and you want to keep this chart in mind when you're looking at word problems because there are going to be a ton of them this year. All right, so we got to our first stop and jot, Ms. Hines. What do we need to do? So you need to pause the video and answer your stop and jot questions. You cannot move on until your teacher checks your answer for correctness. All right, let's still talking about a controlled experiment, step four of the scientific method. We told you that it was contained five things mm -hmm. and it was kind of bulky. So the next important part is the control group. Okay, and the control group is really important. As you can tell, it's kind of in the word controlled experiment. So in order for an experiment to be controlled, you need this. And this is the setup where you do not change the independent variable. Another way to think of it is it's the group you will compare everything else to. It's kind of like your baseline, your normal. Um, so when we think about the Cook experiment, what would our control group be? Um, me and all my glory. We're not going to do anything to me. I'm just going to go up to someone, go up to random people and start asking for dates. So I'm not going to change anything about myself. I'm just going to be my normal self. Right. So a good thing to remember about control groups, it's the thing that stays the same, you need it to compare. Right. The thing that stays the same, you need it to compare. It's very important. 
And I like to chant it because it just rolls off the tongue. The thing that stays the same, you need it to compare. The thing that stays the same, you need it to compare. And inevitably, the great thing about a control group is that if you can't find it, what does that mean about the experiment, Ms. Hines? It means it is not a good experiment. Okay, so the thing that stays the same. You need it to compare. Excellent. All right, let's move on to the next Next part. really important part of a controlled experiment is the experimental groups. So the experimental group, the name gives it away. It's mm -hmm. the group that receives the experimental treatment. It's yeah. where you mess around, where you experiment, where you're going to change something. So if we think back to the beginning when we were talking about this, we asked you guys in our experiment, what is the IV? What, are, what am I changing about myself mm -hmm. to try to get a date? And what am I changing? You're going to put on some perfume. All right, so I already know who my experimental group is mm -hmm. or what my experimental group. In this case, it's Miss Cook with perfume. perfume on. Because that is the group that received the IV or that received the change or that was manipulated. Okay, at this point, you need to pause the video and answer your stop and jot questions. Remember, you're not allowed to move on until you have asked your teacher to check over your answers. And now this brings us to the last part of our controlled experiment, which is our constants. And people often confuse the word constants with a control group. They're mm -hmm. not the same thing. Yeah. Constants apply to both groups, the mm -hmm. experimental and the control. So constants are things that are the same for all of the groups in an experiment. Right. And that's really important because we want to be able to make sure that we're only testing one thing. So everything else needs to stay the same. Really, this is about making sure our experiment is fair. Yeah. All right. So in the cook date experiment, mm -hmm. so let's think what about the this? controls. We need, we're going to have Miss Cook with perfume trying to get a date and Miss Cook without perfume trying to get a date. So we're changing that, but some things maybe we should keep the same. Hmm. So I can wear the same clothes. Same clothes. Okay. Maybe the same hairstyle. Same hairstyle. Awesome. Maybe the same glasses. Same glasses. Excellent. So I hope that you guys are starting to see a pattern here. When we're trying to test for something, we only want to test the one thing, the IV. And in this case, it's my body odor. So everything else needs to be exactly the same. So the way that I ask someone out needs to be exactly the same. My clothes, my hairstyle, my glasses, um, the time of day, where I'm doing the asking out, all of those things need to be um, constant to make sure that my experiment is fair. Okay, at this point, you need to pause the video and answer your stop and jot questions. Remember, you can't go on until your teacher checks your answer. All right, let's look at the very last thing that we need to do for um, the scientific method. The last step is we have to draw a conclusion. And there are two conclusions that we can come up with, right, Ms. Hines? Right, you can either accept your hypothesis, and that means that your hypothesis was right, or you can reject your hypothesis, which means that your hypothesis is wrong. So let's do some examples based on what we were talking mm -hmm. about. So if the hypothesis was correct, if we were to accept it, the perfume should have ensured that I would have received what? More dates. More dates. If the perfume didn't help and I didn't receive any dates, yeah. we know that there's something wrong with that conclusion, so we need to reject it. But there's another step that we need to do if we reject a hypothesis. What do we need to do, Ms. Hines? Um, we need to make a new hypothesis. Yeah, we have to go back and then restart from the very beginning. So science is the cyclical process, mm -hmm. and more often than not, we're rejecting hypotheses yeah. instead of accepting them, unfortunately. So you just have to go back and try again. Right. So science is sometimes very messy. Usually it's very messy. Yeah, that's why it's fun. So at this point, you've finished watching your flipped video. Make sure that all of your stop and jot questions are answered and have your teacher look over all of your notes and your stop and jots one last time before you move on to your activities. Thanks, guys.